Hey guys, so our first step to do would to be cut out the fabric. So first I'm going to cut out the lining fabric. This is going to be what's on the inside of the pencil pouch. So I will have all the templates and the measurement for the templates and everything in the down bar so you guys can print it up. And the most important thing about this is a seam allowance. My patterns don't have it included. So when you do this, you want to leave a good quarter of an inch or a half an inch around the perimeter of the pattern so that you will have space to sew the two pieces together. If not, then your project will come out smaller than it the pattern looks. It'll be smaller than this and you want it to be this size. So let's get to cutting. So for this lining, I'm actually using a really cheap, like, cotton fabric that I had left over from a Halloween project years and years ago. So you can really pick whatever type of fabric you want on the inside. Um, I suggested something not too soft or anything like that because it's going to be inside the pencil pouch and your pencils will and pens will be banging around inside of it. So, um, nothing of high quality, I guess, would be the best bet. Maybe something that's tougher, something you don't mind getting messed up. So, I cut out two of these circles and one of these rectangles of the inside fabric. And now I need to cut out the fabric for the body the ears and the little arms. So I got this really fluffy cream colored fabric and it is um, literally called super cuddly fabric. Like literally that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's a super fuzzy fleece. I was looking for the minky, minky fabric and this is what I found. It was in the baby section of the Joann's fabrics. So um, it's super soft, and, um, if you don't want it that soft, it doesn't have to be. Like I said, it's going to be a pencil case, so. The only thing that really sucks about this fabric that I got is it, the ends, the cut ends leave little fuzz pieces everywhere, and it collects other fuzz pieces, so beware of that. So, I'm going to fold the two, um, the right sides together which are the fuzzier sides when this fabric it's fuzzy on both sides but um yeah so I'm gonna give it a good half an inch seam allowance and then I'm going to pin this bad boy in place so it doesn't move because this fabric is definitely the kind for it to move a lot And as you can tell, it the fluff goes everywhere. So, like I said, this is a really tough fabric to work with. Yeah, so we have our two um, main body pieces cut out. So next thing to do would to do the um, little arms and the little ears. Okay, so we have our piece folded in half. And here is our ear template. This template is going to be really hard to do, but pretty much here is where the ear is going to connect to the head right here. So we pretty much need to extend a tab so we can insert it into the head when we sew the ears into the head. So, 
zoom out a bit. Alright. So we want to pin this. And it's... We definitely want to make sure we have a large enough seam allowance to make sure we're not sewing the whole thing and making it super tiny. Alright, so there's both sets of ears, and as you can tell, it made a giant mess on the floor. <laughs> like I'm telling you, this fabric is crazy. Anyway, so next is for the little armsies. So, we want to make sure that if we want this much of the arm to show, that we have a larger tab like we did with the ear so that when we insert it we can sew it and there's enough room. So... We have all four little legs and it's time to clean up all this mess here <laughs> um, and then get to sewing. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So Toto is kind of like a bunny pig ferret, that's what I like to call him. Um, he's kind of like a bunny because he has long ears, but he's kind of long like a ferret and he has this weird pig nose. So, speaking of, we need to cut out a pig nose. So, um, I'm just going to do this in felt because it will be really easy to attach with some glue. And I am just going to cut it out real quick. You can also do his eyes in a little bit of black felt, but I'm going to use some um, half dome pearls or like safety eyes for his eyes. So there's his nose. So here is my well loved brother sewing machine. Um, I've had this for a couple years now. I got it for Christmas one year and I love it. And um, one little fact about myself that uh, I like to tell people that's a funny fact about me is I can't sew a sewing machine unless I'm barefooted. For some reason, I think it's the like a control or a comfortability thing. I don't know. So yeah, um, let's get to sewing. I hope you guys can see this when I turn my light on, but um, the lighting changed a little. So, um, the first thing we're going to do would be the hardest one, which would be the little tiny feet, or the little paws. So, when I mean seam allowance, I mean the space between where the needle hits and where the outside of the fabric is. And we need that quarter inch because that's the space the foot is. If it was any shorter, then the inside of the machine would chew up the fabric, so... Um, if you're hand sewing, you can do a smaller um, seam allowance if you'd like, but you still need one because uh, it also depends on the type of fabric you have because if you do it with felt, it should be fine. But this kind of fabric, if you do just like a, um, a blanket stitch, then as you can tell, it'll just come apart like that. So yeah you definitely need to sew this so i have the right sides facing together and the wrong sides facing outwards so the fuzzy part on the inside so hopefully this doesn't make too much noise and we will sew with a straight stitch a down down and along like a u I can already tell that this fabric might be a problem because of how fluffy it is. And um, since this piece is so tiny, I constantly want to insert my needle and lift up the foot and turn the fabric as I go because of such a quick corner you can't really do it as fast as if you were just 
doing a normal straight stitch or a larger rounded space. I think that should be fine. And I have a little cutter back here. And there we go. There's our first little footy. And where's my scissors? Let me cut off this excess stuff and I'll turn it inside out right there and this much will be hidden so this will be the little bit hanging off so let's go ahead and do the other one and make it match and then I'll show you and start doing the ears so I had to end up cutting a new earpiece, um, a bigger one, just a, probably a half an inch or an inch bigger than the template because the other one was too small and my machine pretty much ate up the fabric and made it smaller. So I'm going to try it again and let's see what happens. Shut this off. There, there's the ear. Let's turn it inside out. It looks like that. And we sew it to the head there. Do the other one now. So we have our little feetsy thingies and our ears all done. Next would be to cut the holes to do the feet and sew them in and then cut a place for the zipper to go. This is a nine inch zipper so it should fit perfectly fine. And then um, sew the whole thing together. So um, first let's make the spot for the front feet so we're gonna go to the front of the fabric and here's the little feetses and on the pattern I drew I have it placed right about here so I'm gonna put a pin there to mark the spot And then, I'm pretty much just going to cut a hole right where the feet go. Just big enough for the feet to be put in, like so. And let's make it even. It's best to do it from the BX side. Hold it in half, snip it, and it the hole, it, you really need a small hole for this type of fabric because it kind of stretches itself. So you pretty much just insert the feet, paw things, and then when you flip it to the back side, you want to pinch the hole you just cut and then fold it in half along that hole and sew right across it making sure you get all of the hole and sew across here just from the very tip of the corner to the other one so kind of like in a half moon shape and do it across that you don't want to go all the way across because then that would make your pattern this side shorter than the other side. So do that to that one and then for this one we want to make the hole for the zipper so we're just gonna fold it in half and put pins where we want it to be and I think I'm gonna do the bottom little metal part of the zipper a little bit above the butt 
the seam allowance for the butt anyways there and the other one is here so we want to fold the piece in half so the two pins meet up and then take your scissors and cut very carefully directly down the center and stop right where the pins are. So this will be our hole for our zipper in the back and we will sew that once we have the lining sewn together. So, sew the legs and the lining, let's go. Alright, so now we're on to sew the feet and you can really pin these in if you want but I find that pins usually get in the way with this type of thing so I will just hold it in place when I sew it so um, let's see how I I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing normally I'd do it the other way but yes so I want to lift our foot mm. make sure this is in the right place Lift our foot and kind of come in at an angle and hold it, do a little, do a back stitch and then lift a little, Let's see if I can do this, be very very careful of your fingers. Very careful of your fingers. As you can see there's the first little footy sewn in and next is this one. These attached now. Let me shut off the light so you can see it. There we go. So there they are. And I kind of like the way they just bobble but if you want them to stay down or up, you can do um, a quick stitch in the back if you'd like. So, yeah, okay, next I have to sew the lining together. And this is pretty easy, easy. it's a cylindrical thing. So all you have to do is take the circle, and let me zoom out a little so you can see. Take the circle and pretty much sew around the edge of the shortest part of the rectangle and just sew it around like this. And then do the same to the bottom and then the long part would be open and that's where we would add the zipper. Alright, so I pinned the heck out of this and you guys will see what I mean now. You do the circle up here and then you do the other one down here and this will be the lining of the inside. So if you pick something with a pattern, you want the pattern to be on the inside, not out here where the seams and stuff will be. So let's get sewing. Uh, mind you, circles like this are the hardest thing ever, so this sewing project is really hard. <laughs> Alright, so... The key thing to do when you're doing this is to take out pins as you go and tug the fabric as you go. So you wouldn't want to sew just straight like that. You want to pull the fabric straight where you're sewing underneath. So like so. Take these out. And like that. And you just want to tug here. Pull pins out and adjust. Move the foot if you need to. And go. And 
keep going. Okay, so the next part to do would be to sew on the ears. So we want to flip right sides together like this and then place the ears where we want them. But like say we want it here, we don't want to stick it in like that. We want to flip it inside like this. And same with this one. That way, when you sew it and you reverse it, all you see are the ears and the tabs are on the inside with the seams. This one you definitely want to pin in place. So they don't move around. And you can even take a pin and pin the ears down inside so they don't get in your way when you're sewing because you definitely don't want to sew the ears up um, wrong. And you pretty much just want to stitch all the way around the whole thing. So around the feet, all the way up around the ears and the head and all the way back. Since we already cut the hole for the zipper, it'll just be easy and we can flip it inside out like that. So let's go do it. All right, let's start. Try to keep my hand out of the way. So now we're coming up to the foot and I just do the same thing I did before is make sure the needle's down and lift it up and rotate the piece of fabric so that um, I can try and make it um, as round as possible even though the pattern is squarish. I just did that to give extra fabric to make sure I do it correctly. Be very careful because this little nubbin thing I've gotten hit with that a few times and it hurts. So, and here's the crotch of Toto, which sounds awful, but <laughs> just another curve to go through, and another curve. So here is our toto and our zipper hole. So we just flip them inside out, and there's his little feetsies. And there's another foot, and another foot. So there we go. There is toto, and next thing to do would be to sew inside of him the um, lining and the zipper, which we will do all in one sewing motion. Okay, so we have Toto, the lining, and the zipper. So what we do next is put the lining inside of Toto, and you can stuff his little leg bits and stuff if you want, but I don't think he really needs it because this fabric is so fluffy to begin with that the seam allowance is enough to fill his leg, if that makes any bit of sense. So there is his lining, and now you need to decide if you want the zipper at the bottom or at the top. I kind of think it would be cute to have it on the bottom, so it could be like his tail or something, or later you can add like a pom-pom or something that looks like his tail. Um, so next thing to do would to be to separate um, 
to separate the two things and insert the zipper and then you kind of want to curl the end over and lay it next to the zipper like this and you want to pin it in place and do it all the way across and then you take the lining and do the same thing curl it and then pin it and that way you have a nice seam on both sides so just take this pin out and then re-pin both of them in place so it looks like that and then do that all the way across this side and then you can open the zipper and do it on the other side as well. Here is what it looks like so far. It kind of looks like we dissected him a little. But um, one thing that I would like to mention is that when you do this, try to shove the ends of the zipper in between on the inside of the two layers. And when you work with this end of the zipper, the one where it doesn't have the stop at the bottom, the top of the zipper, you want to make sure that when you get it up here, you unzip it a little and sew these two pieces together like that. That way, if you sew them individually in there, when you zip it up, they might not meet and it might look bad. So you want to stitch the ends of the zipper together before you stitch it into the pencil pouch. So I am probably going to hand stitch the zipper in because of my level of experience. Um, I'm not great with zippers, especially on tiny little things like this. So it will take longer, but it will be way less frustrating than trying to use the machine to sew these two pieces together. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go do that and then I'll show you what it looks like with the zipper added. So here's Toto all sewn up. And I think I did a pretty good job. I like the fabric that you can't see the this, this stitches, but when you open it, you can see my hand stitching on the inside. So this is what the inside looks like, and the last step is to add his face. So he kind of looks kind of crooked and derpy in my opinion. So I'm going to make his face crooked to go along with it. So it kind of looks like he's got his head like cock, like tilted kind of. So <clears throat> I love his little feet. So I have my hot glue gun all warmed up and everything. And here's his nose. And I have two um, half half back flat back pearls uh black pearls uh, that i use for eyes on my stuffed animals so i'm just gonna hot glue this on if you have like kids or something that are using it um i suggest you use safety eyes and of course you would want to put the safety eyes in before you sew in the back part because um you have to push them through but yeah, or you can uh, use pieces of felt, like I said earlier. So, uh, all I'm going to do is just hot glue these pieces on. Like that. So, as you can see, I did tilt it a little, so it looks like he's gone, huh? So there we go, here's our finished pencil pouch, and I made it just big enough to fit my favorite pen, which is my sonic screwdriver, so this is my pen, 
that I love so very much. And flip them over and let's put it inside. So I got some highlighters and pens. And there we go. All done. So here is our finished pencil pouch. I hope you guys liked him. And uh, I hope you guys try and make it. Um, I know it's really advanced, but it's still really cool. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.